Entertainment Extra continues with movie critic Richard Krause on News Talk 1010. Hey, movie lovers and citizens of Earth, welcome to Extra Entertainment Extra. I'm Richard Krause. Terry Hart has toddled off back to TMN, but I'm thrilled to have two guests uh, in the studio with me today. First up, let's meet Charlotte Empey. She is the editor-in-chief of Metro Canada. Um, you see the newspaper everywhere. You hopefully see my columns in the newspaper on Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, but Charlotte, nice to see you. Delighted to be here. And uh, my next guest is a Canadian novelist, visual artist, and designer. His first novel in 1991 was Generation X, Tales for an Accelerated Culture. Since then, he's been busy popularizing such terms as McJob and Generation X, writing 13 more novels, a collection of short stories, seven nonfiction books, and a number of dramatic works and screenplays for film and television. He designs furniture, clothing, and outdoor spaces, and as of November 4th, can add serialized writer to his achievements when his 20-part story, Temp, runs in the pages of Metro. So every day, for 20 days, we're going to get a little piece of Shannon the Temp's story. That is correct. <laughs> How did this happen? How did this come to be? This is a really, I, I think, something much different for the newspaper, Charlotte, certainly. And how did, how did uh, all this come to happen? We were really excited when uh, Douglas approached us with this notion of doing a piece of serialized fiction in the paper. Serialized fiction is something that I am passionate about. And interestingly enough, it's something that I wanted to do in Metro right. when I arrived at the paper three years ago, but we just didn't have the opportunity. So when Douglas said, gee, you know what, I think I'd like to do this with you, we met. And I hope I'm not telling tales out of school. We had a fabulous conversation. And I said, well, okay, what would it be about? Douglas said, well, I'm not too sure. I'll go away and I'll write you a chapter. Well, no, he didn't do that. Of course, he came back with the entire <laughs> uh, 20 chapters. I took it home, read it in one sitting, interrupted my husband watching something stupid like hockey to say, oh, my God, you have to hear this. You have to hear this. And that's really where we at Metro got involved. And tell me, what, what was it? Because I don't know that uh, in all the things that you've done here, I don't know that you've ever actually done a serialized piece like this before. I think uh, serialized writing is, I don't think anyone's done it for about the last 95 years, <laughs> That's actually. That's right, since Mark Twain, yeah. Uh, I mean, what, what I was thinking about, Richard, is, okay, I always like every book to be new. Every book's a, an art project, in mm -hmm. a way. And, you know, look at 2013. You've got Amazon, Kindles, Kobos. You've got... Uh, the internet, you've got so many formats, so many people writing, and, and so what can you do in 2013 that really addresses how and when you're living? And and then there's this newspaper called Metro, which I discovered. Now, I love Metro, and the thing about Metro is that every single reader reads every single item. Like, women read the sports, guys read the light, like the other stuff. And and then it gets reread by the next person who finds it, found finds it who found who finds it on the oh my subway. God, I'm having a tense block here. <laughs> uh, it, it, everyone who finds it. Yeah. Uh, and also, its its audience is sort of my audience, which is sort of uh, metropolitan and sort of plugged into the culture at large. It just seemed like a really good fit and something new. And, I, and again, I don't think we've ever. No one's done this for 111 years or something. <laughs> well, the, the subject know. is uh, working as a temp, a woman named Shannon working at a big company. It's about to be bought out by an even bigger company. And I, I was really taken with this because I know that uh, in the, the, the very recent past, in the last few weeks, there's been a great deal of conversation uh, about unpaid interns, about temp, about the nature of work now. It's not the way our parents used to work. My dad had two jobs worked steadily for 50 years and had two jobs spanning that 50 years. I've had two jobs this week, you know, and there's sort of just, this is how it works. The nature of, of the way we work is, is much different. And so Douglas, tell me a little bit about just your take on um, the future of employment. I mean, it's, it's a much different world than it was previous to this. And the, and the, the serial it doesn't really focus on this, but it certainly focuses around the idea that this job is, it's temporary. It's 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 not going yeah. to last for a long time. I mean, it's extra ironic. I've of all things a degree in Japanese business science. <laughs> that, that's one of those little little known facts. And I was over there studying in the eighties when Japan had theoretically lifetime employment, and that was eighty six, eighty seven. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, I think Japan's leading the world in outsourcing its staff and in having free time employees, fritas. And you know, I remember growing up. 
that uh, when you're older, you'll have five or six different careers in your lifetime. But what we didn't realize back then is those careers would all be happening at the same time right. rather than going, you know, A, B, C, D, E. And, you know, another irony, remember Freedom 55? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll just cash out and live on a beach at 55. And we know that's not going to happen anymore. And I, I think I, uh, Shannon comes up with the expression, uh, is it perma -thurs? Like in the future, every day is going to be a Thursday. There's, there's no holidays. And unless you have a genuine skill like being able to perform an appendectomy or, you know, cook a really good roast beef, you're just basically a temp for the rest of your life. The future is temping. Well, Charlotte, I think particularly in media, it seems to me that temp jobs are the, the way that it is now. I mean, so many of the, the people that work for Metro probably, like me, have other gigs elsewhere, and we contribute to the magazine once or twice or three times a week, or the newspaper once or twice or three times a week. But it is, I think, probably uh, not the traditional model that we would have had even 10 years ago. You're absolutely right about that. And I've had a conversation with my grandson about this. He's at Ryerson studying journalism. And I was saying to him that as a writer, however he ends up earning his living, the chances of him ending up working full time as I did in media and getting my parking paid for and all that good stuff is probably not going to happen. I think for all of the creative class, that's not going to happen. But while some of my colleagues in media look at that as a challenge because they think that perhaps print in particular is dying, I would disagree. I think it will be a new way of working that is also an exciting way of working because you have a chance to experience and to grow and to try different things. And you, you, I think you have to learn to live in the immediate mm -hmm. because there might be a job next week, there might not be a job next week, and all of that is okay because that's actually the world, you know? So you mm -hmm. put your head into an entirely different place, I think. I mean, the other thing about metro offices is not only do the employees not get paid, um, they're not allowed to have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and, they squealed on me. And if you look under the desk, their feet are manacled <laughs> to the, the chair. You have to keep them from running out the door somehow. Uh, so, Douglas, this, this, you know, what Charlotte was saying, just in terms of the way that we work now, it strikes me that you've built your entire career around this. You're a restless, creative person who um, I, I was trying to condense your biography down into one paragraph so that I could we didn't have to spend the entire time talking about uh, things that you've already done because there's so much of it. So do you have five projects on the go all the time? Do you have, or do you, are you a completist? Do you do one and then move on, or how does that work? Uh, I divide my life into uh, visual art, which is about space, and writing, which is about time. And within each of those, you have fiction and you have nonfiction. So you have an ongoing fiction project, which takes part in one place in your brain, uh, a nonfiction thing, which could be anything, a biography or what have you. And then there's Art art, which is the stuff that I just do in my studio because I want to do it. And then there's public art, which is the nonfiction version of art, which is, you know, you have a very specific uh, assignment on what you have to make. It's not just from whatever comes out of my subconscious. When we come back, I'm speaking with Douglas Copeland. He's the author of Temp, which will run in Metro starting November 4th. And for the next 20 days till the 24th, you'll be able to read one chapter a day. And uh, this is going to be uh, some interesting stuff. I've read it. Um, this will take you places that you don't expect to go, I think. The story of Shannon the Temp. Uh, also, in bookstores right now, Worst Person Ever. Uh, the book, we're going to talk about that when we come back. And I guess the, the question that I want to get at when we get back is not so much how do you divide up your time, but how do you actually find the time? It's not so hmm. much dividing it up, but how do you find the time to make all this happen? So stay with us on Extra Entertainment Extra. I'm Richard Krauss. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to Entertainment Extra. Now more with movie critic Richard Krauss on In-Depth Radio. News Talk 1010. Hey, movie lovers and citizens of Earth, welcome back to Extra Entertainment Extra. I'm Richard Krauss. Joining me in studio, we have the author of Temp. Temp is a 20-part serial. It's going to run in the pages of Metro. You can find it everywhere in the city and beyond starting November 4th. You want to check this out. It's the story of Shannon the Temp, and it will take you places that you don't expect to go. Also, in bookstores right now, Worst Person Ever. That's Douglas Copeland's new book. Uh, also joining me in the studio, we have Charlotte Empey. She is the editor-in-chief and my boss at Metro. So nice to see you both. 
just before the break, we were talking a little bit about how you divide up your time in terms of all the various projects that you do, Douglas. But I'm curious, just as someone who myself has a lot of gigs, a lot of different gigs uh, spread out over, you know, a, a, a number of different media, finding the time is the tricky bit to do it all. It's not uh, in my head. I can juggle it. It's oh. finding the hours in the day to do it all. How do you do it? Uh, it it's actually kind of a counterintuitive process. Uh, I learned a few years back that um, I call it wake up for nobody. That when I wake up in the morning, I don't want to have a lunch to go to. I don't want to have someone I've got to meet. I don't want to have a phone call. I always just sort of wake up organically, and then the day happens. And um, I am not a patient person, but I am disciplined. And in something like a book, you have to be there in the same chair every single day at the same time. And so they're going to, well, you guys both write, you know what mm -hmm. it's like. It's going to happen or it's not going to happen, but you still have to be in that place. And without that discipline, I don't think books get done. Art is just, you know, visual work, it's one of the few jobs on earth that almost gets better when you drink. <laughs> so that takes me into the evening time. Yeah, so yeah. you can. I see. I, I understand it more now. So we're talking a little bit about temp, and I want to also uh, touch on worst person ever. Worst person ever is uh, the new book. It is the story of Raymond Gunt. He is a British cameraman who gets a gig to go to uh, an island, a little island out in the middle of nowhere, um, sort of, in, and shoot a show, kind of like Survivor essentially. And it's it's what happens along the way with his uh, homeless assistant, Neil, and all the people that he meets along the way. I have to tell you, Douglas, I laughed. Uh, virtually every page of this book Yay. made me laugh. Yay. And and the story, but it, it's, it's, it's more than that. I mean, it's a satire, I think, on on uh, on uh, just sort of the accelerated pace of life that we all live now. It's many things, but beyond, above and beyond all that, and we'll touch on on more of the book in a second, but it is probably the most profane thing that I have read in a very long time. And it, I, I wanted to, to find sort of the balance. It, it, Raymond Gunt is such an interesting character, but about a third of the book in, he does something unspeakable on an airplane. And I'm not going to say anything more that happens after that because I don't want to give anything away. How do you keep readers interested? It kept me interested. But as a writer, when you come up with this idea to have something... He, he is the catalyst of something unforgivable yeah. <laughs> happen. How do you keep readers on side? Um, I read an interview once with one of the Cohen brothers, and what they do when they write a script is one brother writes a page which sets up a problem the next brother has to solve on the next page. <laughs> and so what I try and do, I mean, you write a book. You know you're starting in L.A. and you have to go to New York, so you know where you're beginning and where you mm -hmm. end. I, I love that process along the way where you meander and maybe, you know, you pick up a hitchhiker and murder them and then maybe <laughs> you know, go to Waffle Hut. Uh, when you get a character up and running, basically they start writing the book. And that, as you, interesting, you should say a third way through the book, that's when it usually happens where you sit down and, like, oh, my God, I can't believe he just said that. <laughs> well, wait, technically I said that. Ah, and then it gets kind of scary. And, and that, that's fiction as it should be. It is a very, very sweary book. I mean, it really is. So if you're squeamish that way, you know, be careful. Well, I think uh, hilariously so, though. Well, thank you. Yeah. And, you know, there's also, there's nothing like it out there. You can't say it's like that book or that book. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't think there's ever been a book as, like, worst person ever. Is it, uh, and we just got 30 seconds left in the segment, is, is it a rebellion against political correctness, or is it just a really colorful character that was fun to write? No, I just, we've been through five years of depressing stuff in the culture, and I thought, we really need something funny that can just completely take you out of your head, like, totally, and then, like, okay, Doug says it's okay to laugh again, but it, it's just, <laughs> it's out making you laugh, that's all it is. When we come back on Extra Entertainment Extra, we'll continue our conversation with Douglas Copeland, the author of Temp, which will run in Metro starting November 4th for 20 serialized episodes. No, what do you call them? They're not episodes. In installments. Installments. And Charlotte Empey, who is the editor-in-chief of Metro. Stay with us. It's Extra Entertainment from Entertainment Extra with Richard Krause on In-Depth Radio. News Talk 1010. Hey, movie lovers and citizens of Earth. Welcome back to Extra Entertainment Extra. I'm Richard Kraus. Joining me in studio, we have the editor-in-chief of Metro, Charlotte Empey. Hey. Nice to see you. And Douglas Copeland. He is the author of 20 installments 
of a serialized work of fiction called Temp, which will run in the pages of Metro. And we were talking earlier, it's the first time in almost 300 years that a serialized <laughs> piece of fiction has appeared in this way. It's really exciting, though, to, to, to uh, have a new work uh, come out in this form. It's, I think it's something a little different and something that, you know, again, most readers probably aren't familiar with reading in this style. Uh, I mean, I, it, it, uh, I don't want to sound like a booster here, but part of the excitement of this is the fact that it's actually in Metro <clears throat> Magazine, which I mean, if you look at newspapers, which are just sort of in a free fall right now, it's this one paper that's actually getting larger. And they seem to have figured out how the future works and is going to work. And uh, that's just really wonderful energy to be with. I, mean, I, I think if you're doing this for what just got sold, the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, or, yeah, and New York Times got sold recently. It, it doesn't matter what you do, it would just be intrinsically depressing. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, Charlie, this must make you beam to Absolutely hear this. It doesn't. Thank you so much, Douglas. We'll talk about your... No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I think what's really exciting for us also at Metro is that... Um, Douglas really wanted to work with my team in a collaborative environment, mm -hmm. so it's not about a work for hire. It really is about uh, producing uh, a work of fiction that will have an integrated home in the paper. I'm not going to give away the surprises to the readers either, but they will see exactly what, uh, what I mean when they pick up the paper. Well, I think that a lot of the readers will relate to it because it is uh, the age the age range is right. There's sort of people Absolutely. that there are a lot of temps that probably on their way into their temp jobs are picking up the newspaper. And I think that they will relate to aspects of it. Danimal. One of the characters is named yeah. Danimal. In an office situation, everyone has a nickname. There's always someone with a nickname like that. What's your nickname? Uh, you know, I can't say it on the air. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I was Dougster. Dougster, yeah. <laughs> for a long, yeah, for a yeah. long time. Uh, Have you had office jobs? I did. The last office job I had was... 25 years ago, right here in Toronto. Mm. I, I think what the other nice thing about working with Metro on this project is you have a character, Shannon, who, you know, something goes wrong and she's back with her sister in a basement suite mm -hmm. and she's having a Kate, Kate Winslet, Winslet marathon. DVD marathon. <laughs> and, and the character's like, how does she keep on, like, losing that weight? And so what I'm hoping the editorial department is going to do is, like, well, oh, just that day there happens to be a small article on, you know, Three dieting tips from Kate Winslet <laughs> or something where you actually have the you sort of hijack the structure of the newspaper itself to create sort of this environment that makes you go, wait, like whose head am I inside here? Right. And I want that to be a very disorienting, fun experience. It's like that painting of M.C. Eichers of the hands drawing one another. Yes. <laughs> which hand is drawing which? <laughs> Good one, actually. Yeah. The story is called Temp. It will run in Metro starting on November 4th. You can pick up a copy anywhere. You won't want to miss a, a, a single uh, installment of this. And they will be online as well, right? So if you happen to miss it in the newspaper, you'll be able to find it online yes, as well, absolutely. Charlotte? So you can check it out online, but check it out in the newspaper. I think that's part of the old school fun of uh, uh, serialized fiction. Douglas Copeland, thank you so much for coming in. The book is called Worst Person Ever. It's in fine and not so fine bookstores right now and on Kindle and everywhere else that you need it to be. Charlotte Empey is the editor-in-chief at Metro. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.